When soy milk started to become widely available in American grocery stores, I was a bit excited initially, since that might widen the competition and improve prices and quality. Unfortunately, I discovered that Asian and homemade soy milk tastes completely different from the kind that you can buy at a typical grocery store. I also wonder why the store-bought version comes out to not really taste like soy milk, but no matter, soy milk is incredibly easy to make. Wash the dry soybeans with cold water, then soak them for 8 to 12 hours in water. The beans will double in size, so make sure you have plenty of water in the bowl. Soy milk is super nutritious with protein content similar to cow's milk and less fat in comparison. And with climate change on the cusp of destroying us for good, soy milk also produces 60% less carbon emissions compared to cow's milk. So not only is it delicious, it's sustainable. Once the beans have been rehydrated, wash them again and look to see if there are any nasty looking beans and toss them out. The ratio of water to beans is 3 cups of water to 1 cup of beans. This Vitamix blender can handle a maximum of 2 cups of beans at a time. To the blender, add the soybeans and just enough water to cover the beans, and then slowly bring the speed up to 8. I think that starting with only some of the water and allowing the beans to grind with little water improves extraction, but I can't prove that, so adding in all the beans and water at once is acceptable as well. While keeping the speed at 8, stream in the rest of the water. Allowing the soybeans to grind at a medium-high speed instead of the maximum speed prevents the particles from getting so small that they become difficult to filter out. If you grind at the maximum speed available on a high power blender, then the soy milk that you make will have some sediment at the bottom, causing a gritty texture in the last cup. After grinding, filter the soy milk. I pass mine through two nut milk bags, one inside of the other. If the nut milk bags you purchase come in two filtration sizes, put the coarser mesh bag inside of the finer mesh bag. Double filtering like this completely filters out the grounds from the soybeans and is superior to using a very fine mesh in a single layer. Finally, cook the soy milk on a medium-high heat, stirring constantly to prevent any burning at the bottom. You have to keep your eyes on the soy milk, since if you walk away from the pot, it will boil over very easily. If you start to see the bubbles rise up, you can lower the heat or completely lift the pot from the heat to prevent it from boiling over. You can see that I have reacted too slowly this time and had to do some cleanup. Let the soy milk simmer for a few more minutes and the chance of boiling over will be reduced, but continue to stir to prevent sticking. Total simmering time is about 15 minutes. Let the soy milk cool untouched and then strain it into your storage container. The soy milk will form a tofu skin on the surface, and straining the soy milk is the easiest way to prevent any of it from getting into the final product. The homemade soy milk is not ultra pasteurized like the packaged stuff, so it only keeps in the refrigerator for about 7 to 10 days. I like mine sweetened, hot in the winter, and cold in the summer. Give this delicious and sustainable drink a try and let us know how it turned out in the comments below. And we will see you in the next one when it's time to eat again.